go to the next scripture in the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verse 7. It's prophesied in the Bible, in the works of the Most High, that these events will come to pass. So, like it says in the book of the, of the New Testament, in the book of Romans, Corinthians, the Most High is going to have this change. And it's going to come. So, let's go to the prophecy in Isaiah 25, verse 7. It is written. It says this. And he will destroy in this mouth the face of the covering cast over all people. See, that prophecy is going to take place in this earth. Because in the works of the Most High created the good and the evil. And we're going to show you today that the nations that he put on this earth to play a particular role in his works have to fulfill these prophecies and be in the last days of his works and the end times. So, in this mountain of this government of the United States, with his allies and all the other nations around the world, it was prophesied in the Bible that these nations would be ruled. Now, the rulership of the Most High, who take it over in his plans and his works, is getting ready to come. Now, he set up the players on the earth and the nations that he set up. Israel fell, went into captivity, and scattered abroad in all nations from North Central and South America and the islands of the sea. And now the Most High raised up these nations to make us judge. And now that we're in the last times, he said he's going to destroy in this mountain the fate of the, the mountain, the face of the covering over all people. And this so-called white man set up all these religious denominations. He set up his Democratic and Republican Party. He blasphemy the most high. He blasphemy his people. And he blasphemy the angels up there in the heavens. So all of this is recorded in the Bible of heaven. But you got to get your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from the true disciples and prophets and seers that the Most High set up in these last days. And they're going to come and tell you these things, even though a man tell you, some of you ain't going to believe. And like the Bible says, what if they did not believe? Is this going to make the word of the Most High run effect? No. Because, say, 10 million Israelites don't believe this knowledge. And only that remnant believe it, that's who the whole side will say. Because the Lord said, many are created, but many uh, few shall be saved. So, you want to be in that number. So, it says, cast over all people. And the veil is spread over all nations. See, he got that veil over all people's face too. And these religious denominations, this Africanism, this Islam, and all these atheists that's out here, you've been to see. Even though some of us don't know this, 
A lot of them are going to be caught up in the destruction. So Paul says, save yourself from this unjoined generation. This is a stubborn generation that we're in. Work out your own salvation, brothers, with fin and trimming. And don't worry about what they're saying about you. You worry about what the Lord wants you to do. See? And here it is right here. It started at verse 22. Why is it Adam? All oh, die. Even so in my Hashem shall all be made alive. See? The sin of Adam is still in this earth right now. Many of our people are still running behind that iniquity that Adam did after the flood. And then coming down to Shem, down to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, King David, Solomon, the fall of Jerusalem, 70 AD, the scattering of the people. Many of our brothers are still in that mindset of that, and that sin of that. But when you get your calling, and the most high works, and he says it's going to be a remnant, and he says, and Adam, you die. So you brothers just follow that. Oh. Uh, that curse that Adam brought on us, the Lord said, you're going to die in your sins in this time. But in Mahashah, we're going to be what? Made of what? Uh, why is it Adam? We all die. We are so impressed. We shall all be made alive. So now, the brothers is born again, baptized, refreshed in scriptures, and serving the Lord in spirit and truth. We're the ones that's going to go into this new kingdom. We're not kings yet. We're going to get our crown. By the hand of the Lord, we serve. Our forefathers and kings, King David and Solomon, from the tribe of Judah. We're servants. We're princes. Not kings yet. That crown is going to come from the hand of the Lord when you earn it. See? But every man in his own order. That's the first groups afterwards, they which are Christ at his coming. So the most high set this up in the beginning in his plan. Christ is going to come back to this earth to do what? Then come to the end. The end of what? The end of the world as we know it. There's a scripture in the Apocrypha that says this. And it's going to be the precept in this. The day of doom shall be the end of this time. So the end is coming. And the whole side gave you the uh, signs, great wonders. And he showed us in the scriptures what's getting ready to come. This is what it says in Second Exodus, chapter 7. All right? And we're going to start at the, uh, verse 33. And it says this. And the most high shall appear from the seat of judgment, and misery shall pass away, and long suffering shall have an end. But judgment only shall remain, Truth shall stand, and faith shall wax strong. See that? That's what's coming. The truth is going to be made wax strong. Why? Right? Because the most high says in the scriptures that this is one of the things that's going to happen. The day of doom. <laughs> and he's going to come with the chariots and the angels, and they're going to destroy the kingdoms of this world. Dispensation of time. See? 
and it says, Even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Job 9.24, Proverbs 16.4. Who is ruling now on the planet Earth? These kingdoms of men. And they are ruling on this planet Earth. And it's prophesied in the Bible that the Lord is going to shake down all power and authority. Who is in authority right now on this planet Earth? This so-called white man. This Democratic and Republican Party, this Army, 8th Air Force, Navy, and Marines, this kingdom of America that spread all through the earth and their influence under the other nations is in charge of the earth right now. Okay, that in Romans chapter 13, we have to respect the followers that be because they were ordained of the most high. So what does the Negro know? And he doesn't even know his nationality and where he came from. He doesn't know his career and his other part. This is why the most high said, don't listen to every voice and everything that you hear out here, brothers. You focus in on the Lord and on the vision and on the book and what's written in it. The end is coming when the Lord shall take down all power, rule, and authority. Joel 9, 24 says, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked and cover up the faces of the judges thereof. Hosea chapter 5 tells you that you were the judges in Israel, but you didn't keep the laws, and our forefathers followed other gods and other doctrines to their destruction. And we still go on through that today when our people follow the Hermetic doctrines, Islamic doctrines, false Christianity doctrines, atheism, and anything else that's outside of this holy Bible. That's considered blasphemy, sacrilege, and lies. The truth shall make you free, what the Lord promised that. So, the Lord said, the power and authority. In the book of Daniel, chapter 7, all right, it tells you about the four beasts. It tells you about the lion with wings, which was ancient Babylon, the Kushites had they turned on this earth. It tells you about the bear with the three teeth in his mouth, that was Persia, which are the East Indians, Elam. Then the leopard with four heads, that was the Greeks, the Edomites. And out of the Greco Roman Empire came up, that were also an extension of the Greek, a, a Greek Empire. The Romans, which were Edomites, they came into play. Why didn't Rome do that? 
and from the Greco Roman Empire to this side of the earth with the ten seasons, good seasons, to Christus, Pompey, and Julius Caesar, the original triumphant. And then on this side of the earth, they came over and conquered the earth also. So these are the ones in power and their thought right now. Because the whole side of the world is going to change on this. Job 9.24 says he gave the earth into the hands of the wicked. Proverbs 16 and 4 goes along with it. And they went on the earth and traded down under democracy and republicanism. Those are the two forms in Revelation 13 that they would rule on the, on the planet Earth. So right now they had power. And they had authority. And who came on that power? The Lord did. When the Romans started off, and that is chapter 8, uh, and we're going to start at the uh, verse 24. Oh, we're start at 23. And in the latter times of this kingdom, when the transgressions will come to a full or king of fierce kindness and understanding dark sinners, it shall stand up. That was wrong. All right? And that was the first triumph. It was the concrete practice in Julius Caesar. And after that, it was the king of Caesar. Then it goes into the future. And the powers and authorities on this earth became what? The United States. Under France. Spain, and Britain. And the fourth form was America. So in most house plans, in his works, he said the earth was given into the hands of the wicked, and the Romans took over the earth at that time, Rome fell, and then out of the Greco-Roman Empire came another piece, which is America. And it's going right here, and it's telling you about the past. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. <laughs> who gave the white man his power to seek the great authority? The Lord did, but who did the Lord use to give the white man his authority? Let's go to Revelation, okay? Chapter 13. It's right here in the Holy Bible. Revelation chapter 13 is going to tell you. Alright? And I stood upon the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Remember, the beast was wrong. Having seven heads and ten horns. Now, who are the seven heads and ten horns? In the Bible, after the rise of the Greco Roman Empire, there were seven European nations came out of Rome. These are the seven heads. Greeks, Romans, Spanish, French, Germans, Russians, British. The ten horns represent the ten common market of the European community which was formed in 1958. Switzerland, Belgium, Sweden, Norway, Netherlands, Britain, Denmark, West Germany, Greece, and Brussels. That's what that means. See? And it says here. And upon his horns, the crown of ten crowns, which I call my mark. And upon his head, the name of blasphemy, so-called false Christianity. And we have ministries on that you should watch. The Renaissance period, Cities of Boys, all right? Sunday service, all of that came from the, the ancient nations of Babylon and, and Egypt. Human sacrifice and idol worship and pagan presence. And now they call it what? Christmas. See? And it says this. And the beast which I saw was like a leopard going back to the beginning of Alexander's empire as a leopard before it is. And it's beast. With the feet of a bear coming into this end times of the Russians. Alright? And this mouth, the mouth of a lion, which represents Britain. And the dragon gave him his power, his seat, and great authority. Who's the dragon in the Bible? 
saint. He gave the white man his power, see, and authority on this planet Earth. So now we know who that seven heads and ten horns is, and the beast is. Now Revelation chapter 13, verse 18 tells you it's a man. See what it says there? Here is wisdom. Let a man have understanding, comment on the beast, which was wrong, and the descendants of those uh, that empire, for the number of men. And it's not a six nine three score and six. You ever heard of the six six six? That's a numeric uh, terminology in the Bible. It means missing it, Babylon the Great. When it goes into Revelation chapter 17, also. The mother of hearts. And that's what they formed on this side of the earth. So what the Lord is showing you is that these people who you call so-called Europeans are not so-called Europeans at all. They eat them up. And that's the mystery of who they are in the scriptures. And many of us don't know who these people are. So for many of us got that mark in our head and our form, meaning that you're pushing their philosophies on, on our people. See? So as it says in Psalms 98 verse 2, let's go there real quick. I'm going to show you about this. That the most high set these people up to be who they are. And Satan gave me power, seeking greater glory. Psalms 98, verse 2 says this. This is all five works. So in the Psalms, they tell you right here. Psalms 98, verse 2. Read the verse. And it says this. The Lord has made known his salvation. His righteousness is openly showed in the sight of the heathens. So right now, the Most High gave the earth into the hands of the wicked. He raised up the Babylonians, the Persians, the Greeks, and the Romans in Book of Daniel chapter 7 in the last days in his works. And he had these people play a role in world events. But this one nation called Edom and the great red dragon of Satan who gave them their power of seat and greater thought. So now the most I'm going to show you who that great serpent was in Genesis chapter 3. <laughs> See, it all comes out. And he has remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our power, meaning the most High is going to show you his power in the end time. Because he says, then come up the end. And then he's going to bring Israel back when Mahashah returns, Jesus Christ, and set up this new kingdom over there in Jerusalem. And all that it opposes is going to be destroyed. Because I tell you in the book of Isaiah that this is for the controversy of Zion. The Heavenly Father is going to destroy these nation forces and set up Israel's new army on the other side. And my shot in the king's going to voice, it says he's going to be seen over us in a chariots like whirlwinds. Take out the wicked of all people and the nations. The day of doom is coming. 